Hi, I'm Paul Kitt, and in this short video, we're going to cover tool tips, how you use them, what the mistakes are that people make, and what the best practices are. So we'll talk about use cases uh, and those common mistakes, and five rules to create better tool tips. So what is a tool tip? It's a subtle UI hint. In this case, this is a tool tip from Slack. It's not always um, present, it's dynamic user experience. So it's something that shows up once and then disappears. And the benefit of this is you don't always need to crowd your interface with all this extra information. It's information that's relevant at some time that a user can understand and then they don't need it. So you don't want to have all of this available, otherwise it'll be noisy all the time. Let's talk about use cases. So one use case is onboarding new users. Very common and valuable use case. Here's an example from GoToMeeting. So in this instance, your, the tooltip is being used to highlight specific icons in the navigation. And that can be relevant because a user is coming to the app for the first time. They don't have any familiarity. So this tooltip is trying to encourage familiarity and understanding of what each of these icons means. And the other benefit, of course, is to point a user to an action they need to take next. Often new users don't know what to do next. And so really pointing them to the part of the interface they should focus on can be really helpful. So this is one example of a use case for a tooltip. Let's look at another example, which is feature adoption. Here we look at Google. So this is Google Drive, and this tooltip is pointing out what this icon with this number means. And it's talking about that you need to keep things to follow up on, track to things to follow up on. And this is great because this is inflow teaching. This is, I'm already using this kind of um, feature, this, uh, and with this subtle hint, I suddenly understand what this icon represents, and it's so much more valuable to me. I understand that this is where I can track all of the things that need my attention. And then the call to action of got it is also really great because it forces me to really take a second to think, do I understand? Okay, I'm actively saying that I do understand. So it's a good call to action too. Let's look at another use case. This is around taxonomy. So this is segment.com, and in this, you have a hover tooltip that is explaining what MTUs references. And this is a segment-specific term, and it's, in many cases, you might have terms in your product that aren't kind of uh, widely, wild, widely understood. And so you may need to reference those uh, with a little bit more explanation, and especially if they're not something that is being used frequently and people don't remember, then it's really great to have a persistent tooltip that shows up every time someone hovers over that to give them that extra information without having to explain all of this um, in the interface. So that's another good thing. And sometimes you might realize after you've built a product and shipped it that there's certain terms that aren't clear. And so um, that sometimes you might need to build tooltips after the fact. So those are three you know, good examples. Here are things that you should not do for tooltips. You shouldn't repeat obvious interactions where it's, you know, you, it's clear from the interface that this is what this means. You don't need a tooltip for that. One pet peeve of mine is forms that have fields with tooltips. It's like, oh, add your name here. You don't need that because the form itself, the title and placeholder copy of a form should be able to explain that. They're not great if you're not if it's not relevant for my current flow. So if you're kind of showing me something that's not what you know what I'm trying to accomplish, then it's noise and it's something that I'm not going to be interested in, and it's counterproductive because later on I miss that information. Um, so having it at the right time is really valuable. And then if one of the key things that people don't do with tooltips is improve them. Like why not? Copy is your number one lever for making improvements to your, under, your product's understanding. And so copy needs to be improved all the time. And you need to have a way to be able to see if a tooltip is effective and then improve it. Um, and so that's a big, big gap uh, in current kind of uh, patterns in, in web, web products. Here's an example of tooltip I dislike. Um, and, and the reason is it's referencing uh, this icon to you know, a plus icon next to where it says members. Uh, I can pretty much figure out that this means it's how I would add another member. Like that is an obvious pattern in the interface. And so by referencing that, A, you're, insul you're insulting my intelligence. B, it's kind of almost like a shortcut to trying to get me to take that action. It's like, oh, if I just point it out to you, maybe you'll take it. Or if I, you know, and that's not always the case. If it's not relevant to me, I'm not ready to take that action. It's not succeeding with my goals. So it's not a good tooltip. Um, and so just by showing people stuff, it's not how they take action. So that's one reason I did really dislike this tooltip. So here are some five rules to create better tooltips. Number one, 
make sure, you think of each tooltip as friction. A user has to read information, has to digest that, has to assess, is it relevant? And so you need to make sure that it's valuable because if it's not, then you're adding friction into a user's experience for no good reason. Number two, you should only explain non-obvious things. Like I just showed you, don't explain the obvious. Number three, make it contextual. If I'm in a flow, if it's relevant to me, then show me that tooltip. Don't try and break me out of my flow and show me something that's not relevant. Number four, have it one tooltip at a time, ideally, or if you're gonna have a flow or multiple, don't have more than three or four in a row. That's, the user can only digest so much. Don't overwhelm them with lots and lots of these in a row. And then finally, you have to analyze and test and iterate. Does this tooltip help a user take an action? Do they start using this more? You could use session replay software to see if they read a tooltip and then took that action or use it on analytics. But you really need to iterate, otherwise it's a big missed opportunity. So if you want to learn more about tooltips and build them without requiring engineering or coding, uh, then head over to trychameleon.com forward slash tooltips. We provide software that allows you to easily and beautifully build tooltips and deploy them in your product without having to require engineering. So you can manage these at will, change them, have different styling, etc. So anyway, good luck and let us know if you have any suggestions on tooltips at the bottom of this article.